Hi everyone, it's time for the Bible. Sunny, are you ready for Bible time? I just love the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Bible! I guess Sunny's ready, so if you're ready, let's read in the book of Daniel. When Daniel was a young man, he had to leave his home in Jerusalem and go to live far, far away. Daniel had to serve the king. Even though Daniel was far away from home, he knew that God was still in charge and still taking care of him. So Daniel worked hard and kept doing what was right. Most importantly, he kept praying to the one true God, even though most of the people around him didn't. Daniel did such a good job working for the king that the king put him in charge of almost everything. The king trusted Daniel because he knew that Daniel always tried hard to do what was right and fair. Some of the king's other helpers became jealous of Daniel. They wanted the good job Daniel had for themselves. The other helpers followed Daniel, trying to catch him doing something wrong that they could report to the king. Instead, they saw that Daniel got down on his knees three times every day to pray to the one true God. Then the helpers came up with a plan. They decided to trick the king into making a new law that would get Daniel into trouble. Oh, king, the other helper said, you are so wonderful. You should make a new law that says whoever prays to anyone but you for the next 30 days should be thrown into the lion's den. This was a very bad law since Daniel knew, and I'm sure you know, that we should never pray to anyone except the one true God. But the plan worked. The other helpers tricked the king into signing this bad law. When Daniel heard about the new law, he knew right away that the other helpers had planned this to get him into trouble. What would Daniel do? Should he obey the king's bad law? Or should he obey God, no matter what? Daniel knew the answer right away. He would obey God, no matter what. Daniel kept right on praying. The king's jealous helpers were ready. They saw Daniel praying to God, just as they knew he would. The helpers raced off to tell the king, Oh, king, Daniel is breaking your new law. He's still praying to God. Then the king was sad. He realized he had been tricked. He tried hard to find a way to change the new law, but he could not. The king had to follow the new law and have Daniel thrown into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Do you think Daniel was scared as he was thrown to the lions? Maybe, but he also knew that God would be with him, no matter what happened. Daniel still trusted God. A big stone was placed over the door to the lion's den. The king sealed the stone so that no one could secretly open it during the night. But all night long, the king couldn't sleep. He was so worried about his trusted helper, Daniel. First thing in the morning, the king raced to the lion's den, which was still sealed shut. He called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, My God sent his angel, and the angel shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because God knew that I have always done my best to keep doing what is right. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. They found Daniel wasn't hurt at all because he had trusted in God. Then the king made a new law that everyone in the kingdom should only worship the one true God, just like Daniel had.
Let's review what we learned today during Bible time. Who loved God and served him even when he was far away from home? Was it Daniel or the king's other helpers? Oh, that's an easy one. It was Daniel. Right, it was Daniel. Even though he was far away from everything he was used to, Daniel still trusted God and kept on worshiping him. When you want what someone else has, is that called being jealous or eating jelly? When you want what someone else has, that's called being jealous. You know, I know something else that it's called. It's also called sin. You're right, Sonny. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that breaks God's laws. Daniel knew that if he obeyed God and kept praying, he would get donuts or in trouble. Well, I know if I'm a good listener in my class, then sometimes afterwards we get to have donuts for a treat. So if Daniel chose to do the right thing, then he must have gotten donuts. Oh, Daniel got in trouble, even though he kept praying to God and did the right thing. What? Daniel got punished even though he made a good choice? How can that happen? How was Daniel punished? Was he thrown into a den of lions, a pit of snakes, or a pool of sharks? Daniel was punished by being thrown into a lion's den! Ah! This is just a stuffed animal. It's really okay, kids. You're right. Daniel was punished by being thrown into a den of lions. But God knew Daniel was innocent, so he sent an angel to keep Daniel safe. Can you think of someone who never did anything wrong but got punished for our sin? Ooh, I know that one. Jesus! Jesus took the punishment for our sin. Right, Jesus. Jesus loves us so much that he came to take away our sin by dying on the cross for us. When we believe in him, he'll not only take away all our sin, he'll give us life forever and ever with him. What did Daniel do that we can do too? Um, we can have a sleepover with lions. <sighs> no, I don't think we get to have a sleepover with lions. Daniel prayed no matter what happened in his life. He kept trusting God and he kept on praying. The Bible even says he prayed three times a day. Maybe he prayed in the morning when he first woke up, at the noon time when he ate, and when the sun went down in the evening. You can do that too. No matter what's happening, we can keep praying to God. As we pray to God and read our Bibles and learn to know and love God more and more, we grow in our faith. We grow to know and trust him no matter what, just like Daniel. Today's Bible verse is from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 17. Daniel 3.17 says, 
God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Let's use some pictures to help us remember this verse. God, whom we serve, here's a picture of a girl pouring some tea, she's serving it, is able, when we say he's able, that means he can do it. God is all powerful, all good, and all knowing. He can do anything he wants to do. To deliver us, in this picture, a little guy's being rescued or delivered safely by a helicopter. We know God is more powerful than any helicopter or any person in the world. He's able to deliver us or rescue us from our sin or from any situation that we're in. Let's look at the whole verse of Daniel 3.17. Daniel 3.17, God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Great job, let's say it one more time all together. Daniel 3.17, God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Great job. Keep practicing and know that God, who we serve all the time like Daniel, is able to deliver us or save us from anything all the time. I sure enjoyed learning about Daniel today. I really love the way he trusted God no matter what. It's great to know that whether we're young or old, we can keep growing in our faith. Praying is a great way to grow in our faith. You're right, Sunny. I would love to pray for everyone. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads so we can just think about God right now. God, thank you so much for being with us through all things. Thank you for giving us the story of Daniel in your word for giving us these true histories of people who had faith in you. Help us to grow in our faith, trusting that you will be with us always. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to be our savior. Thank you for loving and forgiving us no matter what. Please be with us and our families this week as we grow to trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time.